This is MetaQuest Pro. Quest Pro is our sleekest form factor yet, with a super thin set of lenses at the front and our first ever curved cell battery at the back to give it a perfect balance. Our new headset design with this open periphery lets you see the physical room you're in. But you can also use Quest Pro's magnetic light blockers for a more immersive experience whenever you like. We've also redesigned the whole optical stack to make it better than anything we've shipped before. The new pancake lenses work by folding light over several times and let us make the display 40% thinner compared to Quest 2. The new lenses aren't just thinner, they also put more pixels in the center, giving you sharper, clearer visuals, which makes reading text a whole lot easier. Yeah, and the LCD displays have 37% more pixels per inch than Quest 2. And thanks to our new local dimming technology, 75% more contrast with richer and more vibrant colors that just make VR even more engaging. This is also our first device to use the new Snapdragon XR2 Plus processor that we worked on with Qualcomm. It's optimized for VR, so Quest Pro runs at 50% more power with better thermal dissipation, which gets a significantly better performance. Yeah, the controllers are now basically their own computers, which is a bit ridiculous. Uh, we've re-engineered them to track themselves and also work a bit more like extensions of your hands. Yeah, the new sensors track their positioning in 3D space all on their own without using the headset, so you can get a full 360-degree range of motion. And they include our new True Touch haptics, which give a wider and more precise range of feedback effects. So when you pick them up, they also feel a lot more balanced and natural in your hands without that LED ring. You can even add a stylus tip on the controllers, turning them into tools for writing or sketching. You can try this on the whiteboard in workrooms, or you just flip them around and write directly against your own physical desk. So we're including an all new charging dock that fits great on your workspace and keeps both the headset and controllers charged at the same time. Quest Pro uses high resolution cameras that capture four times as many pixels as Quest 2 and an additional RGB camera to turn pass through into full color, along with a depth system made to understand your environment and work with it. And with scene understanding and anchoring, objects in your room can become part of the virtual experience. You can see here how people's avatars reflect their expressions and reactions. This makes your shared social experiences so much stronger. It's powered by our Movement SDK, our newest addition to Presence platform. Movement SDK enables avatars to mimic expressions in real time using Quest Pro's inward-facing cameras. And we call it Magic Room. It lets you meet in mixed reality and share the same right. space. You can use a whiteboard, bring in 3D objects. Everyone is present and has the same tools, whether they're in full VR or in mixed reality. We think that this will help hybrid teams collaborate, and we're hoping to ship this next year. We're really excited to get this into your hands, and it's available for pre-order starting today for $14.99, and it ships on October 25th. What are you most excited about, Melissa? How about we start with a trailer from the latest team to join Oculus Studios? All systems back online. Look alive out there, Stone. The world needs you, Tony. The world needs Iron Man. Well, look at you, tourist. The living, getting more desperate. Guess you ain't the only one who thrives on creating havoc. Gonna take nothing short of us. Wherever the tourist goes, Death ain't far behind. Oh. 
Spotify, we are bringing Microsoft Teams immersive meeting experience to MetaQuest uh, in order to give people new ways to connect with each other. Uh, you can connect, share, collaborate as though you were together in person. Another piece of this is that we're working on enabling Horizon workrooms for Teams. So people will be able to join a Teams meeting directly from workrooms. And we think that this kind of cross-device, cross-screen experience will be the foundation of the virtual office of the future. Uh, so with Microsoft 365 uh, coming to Quest, you'll be able to interact with sort of content from all your favorite productivity apps, right? Whether it's Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, uh, giving you even more flexibility in how you collaborate and get work done. Uh, and with xCloud Gaming, you can stream hundreds of games to any device, allowing you to connect with gamers in all new ways, whether they are right next to you or sitting on the other side of the world. Um, and we are partnering to bring the service to MetaQuest Store. Uh, you'll be able to play 2D games with your Xbox controller projected on a massive uh, screen on Quest. Uh, it's early days, uh, but we're excited for what's to come. And this is a preview of our next generation of avatars. They're so much more expressive and detailed than anything else today, and they have this unique meta style to them. Now, it's a lot of work to build AI to auto-generate these for billions of people, and then give everyone the tools to make sure that your avatar feels like your own. But I'm excited to start rolling these out later next year on phones, VR headsets, and more. Absolutely. There are already dozens of apps on Quest that support meta avatars, and we're building partnerships so you can use your avatar across lots of different experiences. And in fact, today we're announcing partnership with Zoom that will let you show up as your avatar on Zoom calls. So to make this easier, we're extending the meta avatars SDK to iOS and Android on Unity. And I'm also excited to share that the meta avatar SDK will soon support Unreal Engine and virtual reality too. These expansions will make it a lot easier for more developers to start building meta avatars into your apps. The Avatar Store is launching in VR later this year, so you'll be able to shop for virtual clothing in VR. With more options for body types, as well as shaders for more realistic skin. There's one more feature coming soon that's probably the most requested feature on our roadmap. Legs. Legs! I know you've been waiting for this. I think everyone has been waiting for this. And now we're getting ready to launch the first full-body avatars. Yeah, so with standalone virtual reality headsets, understanding your leg position is surprisingly difficult because of occlusion. So if your legs are under a desk or if your arms block your view of them, then your headset can't see them directly and you need to build an AI model to predict your whole body position. Yeah, so that's where we're going to bring legs to Horizon first. And we're going to keep bringing them to more and more experiences over time as we improve our technology stack. And we will bring new tech that lets developers implement custom avatar actions and behaviors for the experiences they want to create. That's coming next year, too. And I'm looking forward to seeing what all of you will build. Here, you can see two people playing an arcade game with EMG. They're both using the same gesture, but because no two people are exactly alike, they do it in slightly different ways. The neural interface continuously gets better over time at understanding each person. The potential for co-adaptation extends beyond normal gestures into some truly novel territory. Here, the algorithm is learning in real time how to respond to the EMG signals the person is sending with only the slightest of hand movements. The system is recognizing the actions the person has decided to perform by decoding those signals at their wrist and translating them into digital commands. And now, the person is able to communicate their intended actions to the computer with almost no hand movement. This is a genuine transformation in the way we interact with the digital world. Here's how it works. So we just scan them on the phone. And that's about it. Oh, wow. The level of detail in this is impressive. You can kind of see all these fine elements of it, like each individual strand of its hair. So here we used a, a different technique called inverse rendering to scan an object into its digital twin and then bring it into augmented and virtual reality. So we use Spark to put the virtual object next to the physical one here. They're almost identical. Neither approach is real time yet. Mark, do you want to show us the latest in Kodak faces? Yeah, definitely. You know, last year during our visit to the lab in Redmond, I, I saw the second generation of our Kodak avatars. So I made one of myself. 
Now we've made them a lot more expressive. And not just simple things like looking left, right, up, down, but also the nonverbal cues that we rely on to communicate with each other and understand tone. Things like raising an eyebrow, squinting, uh, widening my eyes, or scrunching my nose. You know, these avatars are way better at capturing those subtleties that define physical interactions. They're just much more natural. And being able to control the lighting on the avatars adds another dimension of life to them. When we move the light around, you can see how it interacts with my hair, it reflects on my skin, and you can even see it in my eyes. Now, these are awesome, but they also take a really long time to generate. So we're working on something that's a lot quicker for people to use. All you need for the scan is your phone, and you can pretty much do this anywhere with reasonable lighting. She scans her face from different angles with a neutral expression for about 30 seconds, then spends another minute and a half making a variety of expressions. And that's really all there is to it. Hi guys, my 3D avatar is ready for use in my phone or VR. It just took a few hours to generate after my scan and the team's working on making that processing a whole lot faster. Now, obviously this isn't the same quality as you just saw with the 2.0 codec avatars. However, they're still pretty expressive and realistic. We're putting a whole lot of effort into developing these so anyone can easily create their own high quality, realistic avatar for themselves. Philosophically, We've always been about building in the open. We'd rather show the progress we're making and talk about the challenges we're still working through. We don't have all the answers because some of them just don't exist yet. We're all on this journey together. So if you care about technology and how it can help us connect, if you wanna help build a world where we can all experience things that haven't been possible before, if you believe in a future where we can all do more and be more present, then I hope that you're just as excited as I am. So thank you for being a part of this journey, and we'll see you again soon.